Looks like this is where video games should be. And we got some Wii Fit, not a lot else. So I'm sure a lot of you have a favorite Goodwill you go to and then you have a routine in that Goodwill of like, okay, I'm gonna go check you know, the video games first, then I'm gonna go to the dishes and then I'm gonna go to the clothes and all that kind of stuff. I definitely have a routine, but today I am switching up my routine. I just feel like doing something different, so. I'm in the blankets first today. This is kind of pretty, actually. 10 bucks though, it's a little me. Not quite special enough. I just have been on a, a crochet blanket kick and I just really want to see what they have today because this one sometimes has really good stuff. And this is a nice, like, neutral one. I feel like that would go well in someone's home. It's not the style that I, I would get and I don't think it's like, enough pizzazz for me to be able to sell it online but I think someone's really gonna like that one so we'll leave it for the next person. <laughs> nice black and white chevron. Very pretty. Alrighty. Nothing today but that's okay. I always get excited. Maybe I'll find something. Saturday Night Live trivia game. It was taped up. Someone's been inside. What does that mean? Does it mean someone looked at it and was like, nah, it's missing stuff? It's hard to say. It's only two bucks, so I want to get it, but not if it's missing a bunch. Hmm, curious. This is a pretty cool decanter. I like that this stopper is like a wooden ball. That's pretty cool. And it's got its original seal on it, so it's never been used. I don't really think I'm going to get it. There's a lot of fun stuff here, like this little flamingo jar. Lots of teapots. And this little vintage stove teapot it's missing its lid but it's still really cute music's really loud <laughs> usually is at this goodwill board games are something i'm definitely going to focus on just a little bit more in the foreseeable future until i get a shelf full of them in one of our antique malls uh so i'm i'm trying pretty hard to find some stuff now this is interesting thomas train this should be right up my alley but not a board is a board game is it a board game i don't know it's a board, okay, it's a puzzle. Thomas and Friends puzzle. Good to know. Oh man, this little strawberry shortcake jar here. Strawberry shortcake stuff does pretty well for me, but look, oh no. It got dropped on its noggin. Hey look, it's the Berenstain Bears. No, I'm not saying that wrong. It's actually how you say it, but my entire life it was the Berenstain Bears blowing my mind. I'm standing here looking inside this Saturday Night Live game and it's looking pretty good. I look up, what do I see? A box full of train tracks. The hope with a box like this is usually that there's actually some trains in there. And it's hard to tell. $7.49. It's not a bad price. Hmm. Honestly, what the problem here is, is that I'm already just completely buried in the tracks. And I don't need more, but the other stuff that's in there is pretty good. I'm gonna think about this one. Checking the bagged toys wall. Last time we were here, I got a brat stall out of it, but can we be lucky twice? Hmm. So many naked dolls but none of them, none appear to be brat stalls. One more bag. Close, it's like the right style shoe, but it's actual shoes, not just like detachable feet. And a, you know, bag full of cookie cutters because that's what every child needs to play with. I just spotted two things I absolutely adore. First one, holy cow. No, that's a SpongeBob shirt. Hey. Look at these. 
Oh, these are so cute. When Oxfords were really popular, I want to say like 2011, 12, I wanted a pair just like these so bad. I was like, I don't want any other pair. I want a pair of black and white Oxfords. Oh, these are cute. Size 10, made in China, probably not quality. I think they're adorable. Eight dollars. You girl is contemplating. Do I want them? You know, honestly, I probably won't wear them now. It's just I'd be getting them to like fulfill that dream, finally owning a pair, but then I won't ever wear them. So. Oh. This is pretty crazy. That's all there for $2.29. It's pretty awesome. Hold on, that can't be right. It's just episodes one through 17 for Pearl, so it's not even all of it. it. Still seems all right for two bucks though. Okay, I have no idea what these shoes are, but they are tight. Oh, Steve Madden's. Oh, they're cute. They're eights. No way they're gonna fit me. Oh, but I love them. How much are they? Nine dollars. Do we try to cram our feet in them anyway? Because like, I'd be in pain for those. These are cute too. These are even smaller though. Also Steve Madden's. So pretty. I've got socks on too, so this really isn't gonna go well. <laughs> There's no shot. <laughs> Check it. So these are interesting. It's a golden butterfly, Pyrex. Pictures? One of them has the lid, the other doesn't. And don't, do not use on top range. 72 ounces. I guess they're just pitchers, like water pitchers, but I don't see much practicality in them. Um, They'd be cute vases, I guess. But, uh, like $4 a piece. Not super interested, I guess. I'll look them up and see if I change my mind, but I probably won't. Here's a gun that I sell pretty well. It's got its clip, that's good, but... Battery door. It's completely gone. Big boo. The question is, are we gonna be able to find any more board games today. Furniture section in this Goodwill is usually pretty lit. <laughs> like, look at these. New upholstery work, that's for sure. Or just a good clean. They're so cool. The hard part about putting board games in one of our antique malls is really just the price and profit ratio. So we actually got that game that we just bought for a dollar because it was half off and it was complete. So that's really neat. You know, a, a nice copy of Risk for $349, that sounds like it would be a pretty good deal, but board games can be tricky, you know? I, I don't know, I'll have to look this one up and see how much it would cost on eBay or something, but I just, I do wanna get these basic board games that anyone's gonna be looking for and want a copy of in my antique mall, as well as some of the pop culture stuff, you know? This is a pretty cool piece too. It needs some work. Like, I think painting it and then changing the knobs on this just to something a little more ornate. Like this grid work is so cool. I think that would be a really cool piece to put all your Pyrex in. Unfortunately, this is rather typical. $30 for an Ikea bookshelf that is actually partially assembled wrong. It doesn't have its shelves. That's a big boo. $30 for an Ikea desk. All right. I have spotted a DIY um, that I don't think I'll be replicating. 
Is it funny that I know that that's a pair of Wranglers? <sighs> Some Levi pockets. Interesting. A for effort, totally. As of shooting this video, it's Monday. And so what has to happen on Mondays is we have to go to our antique malls where we uh, do most of our reselling. We have to check on them because weekends are always busy. Stuff gets shuffled around, thrown on the floor. So the two thrift stores we just went to were on the way here. And this was honestly, I don't know if you guys do this, but we have stuff we have to get done every day. It's just what happens but we thrift on the way to those things. That's exactly how we live our life. So here's today's end goal. Let's do this. Let's go inside, let's split up. Let's both go to our booths. Let's both of us talk to you guys about what sold over this last weekend, what didn't. Just tell you how things are working for us right now. So stick around, because that's what today's gonna be all about. All right, let me give you a quick rundown of what did and didn't sell in the last couple of weeks in our antique mall for you. There were 45 packs of these Pokemon cards in here at $2, $2.50 a pop. That was some pretty good sales. They're selling faster, we can get them in here. I'm honestly pretty much gonna be running out because the stuff that we resell here is the stuff that we buy and then our doubles from our po own personal Pokemon collection. It's just a little bit of a way to recoup some of that investment, but we're running out of those cards because we haven't been buying quite as many because uh, it's been harder to get our hands on the newest sets of Pokemon cards that are coming out. But another thing that sold well this last couple weeks have been these stickers. And I know all you guys know that we sell stickers and buttons. These buttons have sold pretty well too. This basket was full and it's about empty. And we sell these buttons for $1.50 a piece. And this has been interesting because when we first opened this booth, those stickers and buttons sold incredibly well. Like it was almost scary. It was really scary. Like it, it, it was really good. And then it leveled out to where instead of several hundred dollars a week, it was maybe a hundred dollars a week or something like that. Uh, which is fine. I, I think if you think about it, there's a certain number of people that are going to shop here that are regulars and out of the regulars, everybody got their sticker fix. So they're obviously not as many are going to keep selling. But for some strange reason these last couple weeks, and maybe it's because we're kind of back to tourist season, you know, snowbird season. I know there's COVID to consider, but maybe just because there is a little bit more shopping here because of that, there has been an uptick in scissor, uh, sticker sales. I was going to say scissors. Something that didn't do as good this week is the Nerf guns. Um, which is interesting, but I, I think I have an explanation for that too. Our last pay period, it was way better for Nerf guns, but that was because I had several, several $60, $70 guns. Uh, so this week, like I sold one of these, 15, 20 bucks, you know, I sold one of these. And then uh, several more accessories. We sell a lot of clips and stuff, so it's still okay, but I've got to do better about getting the big expensive guns in here. But unfortunately, and the unfortunate part of this business is that that is at the whim of what shows up at the thrift so maybe we'll hit the thrift harder in the next couple weeks and get more nerf guns in here but that's a kind of a recap of how we've done uh in this booth over the last couple weeks but let's check out the dish booth okay it was a big sale weekend and my booth obviously was rifled through <laughs> all of the jeans all of the clothes there's just signs of life which is fine, that's great. Um, I actually sold quite a few clothes this weekend, so we did pretty good. Um, probably my biggest seller was denim jackets. So I sold two or three of those, which is awesome. That can be thrown away. Not sure what this is. It's a sale thing that's happening later. All right, cool. Um, sold, I did sell a Harley shirt, so it makes sense that there's another one here, I guess someone took one out of somebody else's booth and then swapped it for mine instead, which is pretty cool. I'm fine with that. I don't have many Harley shirts right now. I think I'm down to one. So there's two, there's two here, but um, it's good. They sell pretty quickly for just a little bit and I'm totally fine with that because I just find them with the bins and I throw them in the booth. Uh, so I need to start a go back pile. We'll just leave that here right now. I do know as far as dishes, um, the like nonsense wall hasn't really done a whole lot. Last um, weekend, 
but that's fine. This stuff is here just it's like inspiration. Someone's just like, oh my gosh, I think I'm gonna start shopping for planters. That's really cute. And eventually someone will buy it. But I do know I sold a few more Disney cups, which is great. I'm down to just one pattern though. So I need to find more of those, but they are actually kind of tricky to find in the wild. This section does pretty well for me in general. This is like my collectibles. So I do sell quite a few of these like just little licensed things. Tupperware continues to do really well, as you can tell. We got rid of a lot of that. And um, biggest seller this weekend was measuring cups. So the big eight cup measuring cups are all gone now. So that's really cool. I find those every once in a while and they're usually pretty cheap. So I go ahead and grab those anytime I can. Um, but my Tupperware section has been pretty much obliterated <laughs> as far as all the like canisters that have sold and the measuring cups that have sold. Um, the little like round containers and square bins and stuff like that, they go a lot slower, but I feel like that's what everybody finds to put in their booth. So there's just a lot to choose from. So I knew going in that that stuff wasn't really gonna sell super quickly, but I'm totally fine with that. Did well with Pyrex this weekend, which is great too. Um, I sold my big golden butterfly bowl for I think 20 bucks or so, which is pretty good. Um, those big Cinderella bowls do pretty well. And then, um, there's a couple Pyrex sets that sold, but I don't remember which ones. Oh, I do. Um, there's a few white bowls that sold as well. And I was originally like, I'm going to start picking up the just blank white bowls because I think I can start building a white set. So that worked. I have a few Christmas ornaments down here that we found in that big um, keychain box. So I just threw them in here because it is tis the season. But let's talk clothes. So I actually sold quite a few jeans, like not, I didn't sell any of the color block jeans this weekend, which is totally fine. They're doing really well online right now. So um, I just keep focusing on putting them in on um, my clothing apps, but I've sold a lot of the shorts and a lot of the vintage jeans. So I had, I think about 20 pair of jeans in here before this weekend started. And now I'm down to like one, two, three, four, five, six, seven pair. So it did really well. Um, and as far as shorts go too, I, I had less shorts in here. So still have a good supply of, of the shorts, but it's, it's like slightly hot still here in Phoenix. So, Shorts are still totally good to leave in here, but people are starting to pick up the jeans for the colder months. So I need to get way more jeans in here. And I'm happy to hear that because jeans are my favorite and I have a ton of jeans that I can get rid of. So um, on next restock, I'm gonna go ahead and bring a lot more jeans in. It's gonna be great, super happy. Now you gotta clean all this up because we don't want this pretty girl laying on the floor anymore getting dirty. <laughs> All right, another successful day of thrifting in the bag. As I kind of pointed out already, today wasn't really a thrift day for us. Some days we leave the house to do nothing but go thrifting, but we got a bunch of stuff done off camera today, and uh, I feel good about all that, and I'm glad we got to come home with a little something extra, extra. I'm very excited about it. I'm very excited to show you what we got. First thing, uh, well, first thing is nothing, because you didn't get anything, right, Hannah? No. It's all right, it happens. Uh, it comes and it goes. Uh, but we did get stuff for our toy booths uh which is good because hannah and i are very excited to start stocking toy booths in some of our antique malls and i uh, uh i brought home a board game on yesterday's episode life which we were able off camera to find out that every not only is everything in here there's extra simpson pieces from other simpson board games pretty weird stuff but very happy that we brought that home yesterday and then to continue on today i brought home two more board games now here's the thing a lot of you are going to know a lot of you guys know more about board games than i will and you'll know that sometimes at a thrift store you can find very very uh expensive board games for pretty cheap and i hope to be able to do that i hope to start recognizing some of those things but for now what i'm really interested in is getting some of this kind of staple pop culture -y stuff on my shelves at one of our antique malls 
not the one we were at today. The antique mall we were at today, I wish it was the one they were going to because I love going to the thrift store and then driving straight to my antique mall and stocking stuff. But the, the board game place, the antique mall we're going to put board games in, we're going to go to a couple days from now or maybe on tomorrow's episode or something. And you'll see, I've already got a few board games there. I'm going to be putting some more stuff like this in set antique mall. Now, look at this. Look at that price tag, right? It says two forty nine, dollars but it was actually about $1.25 because green was half off today, right? Yeah. So that's pretty awesome. Um, and it's actually all here. You wanna take a look at this, show off a little on the inside. It was a little disconcerting to look at because it looked like it was maybe missing some stuff here, but it wasn't. These are actually like where the cards go once you answer them or something like that. We, we read up on it and we're pretty confident and uh, it's pretty cool. I don't exactly understand exactly what the game was. I thought at first maybe it'd be a trivia game but I'm thinking it's actually uh, some charades and other stuff. I don't know. Something like that. So this card says, not ready for prime time. Choose a performer from your team who can get you to guess the character by acting it out. So I guess it is it is like trivia, kind of. Like you're imitating characters from Saturday Night Live. Like you got to reenact your version and get your, uh, your teammates to guess it. So it's a pretty interesting board game. It's very specific because... Everybody playing has got to know a lot about Saturday Night Live, I guess. Because this card says, choose a performer from your team who can get to you to guess the character by acting it out. The performer can speak but can't say the names of people or places. The secret stage directions may be used if the performer doesn't know the character. I'll pass the cue card to the performer, then start the timer. So that's directions for me, the actor. The secret stage direction is build a bridge to nowhere. The answer is... Sarah Palin, parentheses, Tina Fey. So, that's interesting. So that's for a group of people that are super into some Saturday Night Live, I guess. Um, but that's that's fine. I want more of this. I want more, I mean, I want more of this cool, super cheap stuff just to fill a single shelf or bookcase. One of these bookcases, just like here in the game room at our antique mall. So, those are good. Um, but the Risk today is kind of another one of those staple things. I mean, this is not like a fancy copy at Risk. Some of you might know they make some pretty elaborate versions of this, which would be more sought after. Um, the reason I got this was because, once again, it was super cheap. Let me untape it here. But not only was it super cheap, but I think this might surprise you. It surprised me. On the inside, not only is it all here... This tape is ridiculous. Come on now. Not only is it all in here, but there's the book, there's the board, the box, the uh, secret mission cards, and then under the mission cards, those. And then here, these are all the little figures. There's like 300 figures. They're all sealed, unused, which would be the easy part to be missing some of those. Let's go ahead and safely take this tape off. So, as cheap as this was, I thought, well, heck, why not? Why not put a regular risk? Or if, you know, if I come across a regular copy of Monopoly tomorrow, I'll probably still put it in my toy booth if it's just two or three dollars like this was. So I'm buying two dollar board games, hoping to get 20 or so dollars out of them in our antique malls. Uh, much like on today's episode, we kind of showed you guys what was going on, kind of what we sold. We're gonna start doing that periodically just because I know we've accumulated a lot of people that either came across our channel because they're into the antique mall thing, or a lot of people have quite interestingly become inspired to go do their own. So over on our Discord, which you can find the links in our description for, um, a lot of people are chatting about their antique mall booths over there, what's selling, what's not. And uh, I don't know if any of you guys right now with your own booths are selling board games. You can definitely chat about it uh, in the comments as well of over, uh, as over on our Discord. And we can maybe talk a little bit about that today on the Discord. But uh, I will also be letting you guys know over the coming months, weeks, how board games go in our antique malls. Not really looking to sell too many of them on eBay. We've sold a couple board games when we've come across them. There's some random, uh, what was it, Hannah? Like uh, some of the more rare Pokemon ones will sell pretty quick for us on eBay. Some, uh, some of the weird, there's some actually pretty valuable supernatural board games we've sold on eBay. So that's all pretty cool. But um, I'm not looking, I'm not out of the thrift stores looking for these to put on eBay. I want a shelf full of them in my antique mall. And that is something I will absolutely make happen in the next couple weeks. I'm going to fill that shelf up. Pokemon Diamond and Pearl DVD episodes 1 through 17. It's kind of the same thing. It was two bucks. So I've got the antique mall booth we were at today. I should have slapped a sticker and put it in there. I sell a lot of Pokemon stuff at that booth. 
Here's probably fine of the day though, wouldn't you think? Yeah. This tub here full of Thomas the Tank stuff. Heck yeah. It's taped up really well. Uh, I'm hoping there's a train or two buried in here. But this was cool, because that's just wide enough for a track to go under, right? And for the trains to go under. A four-way crossing piece. So this is right off the bat pretty good, because that's a five or six dollar piece. Five or six dollar piece. Every single one of these are a dollar fifty piece. We sell every track for a dollar fifty. Um, every small piece like these are all a dollar fifty, dollar fifty, probably two or three dollars. So you can see how this kind of box for us adds up. Dollar fifty, dollar fifty. Uh, I think we do two or three dollars on these. And then there's some generic trains. We do about a dollar fifty on the generic non Thomas the Tank trains as well. So dollar fifty, dollar fifty, dollar fifty, dollar fifty. Um, but I kind of just want to make sure, I guess let's dump it out a little. I want to make sure there's nothing extra special. There's not looking too beat, but that's okay. Cause, uh, these are neat little pieces that we don't have in our antique mall at all. Um, this is copyrighted for kid something. I can't even see it, but that's okay. The coolest thing we discovered when we started reselling what I always refer to as Thomas the Tank is that there's, what is there, Dig, Doug and Melissa, I was gonna say Dig and Melissa, <laughs> uh, Dig Trio. Uh, Doug Trio? Dig Trio. Doug Trio. Diglet. Diglet. Doug, Doug Trio. Trio. <laughs> <laughs> this is Kid Craft. I don't even know if I've ever seen that. Nope. But Kid Craft, Doug and Melissa, Thomas the Tank, and I don't know, even some like Bob the Builder, some other stuff, all those tracks are almost always compatible. So, uh, matter of fact, I'm pretty sure this kid craft is probably not the same brand as these. Even Ikea has their own brand of these toy trains type stuff. So what's really cool is people will come in and buy our Thomas the Tank branded trains, right? Uh, do you see my Thomas the Tank? Right here. I'm, I'm not trying to collect too much of it myself, but I'm just collecting a few nice pieces of my own just for purposes just like this, just for example and display purposes. But you see, this fits this track quite nicely. If, if it's Ikea, if it's all these other brands, these fit the track really well. So that being said, people will come into our toy booths and buy the nice trains that we sell and they don't really care so much about the rest, right? Everybody's collection of Thomas the Tank tracks are all of these brands combined. Um, and this is good to know too, if you're just watching them for your kids, you wanna buy some Thomas the Tank stuff, go buy the nice trains from the toy store and go to Ikea and buy their train set, right? That is gonna have a bunch of these cheapy trains on it, but the tracks and all this extra add-on stuff that you'll get in the Ikea set will be compatible with your Thomas the Tank. So a little hint from me there. Uh, but all that being said, this stuff sells like hotcakes in our booths, um, regardless of what the brand is. And you don't always get that. You don't always, you know, I sell a lot of Lego in our antique malls, but I do not sell a lot of Mega Block, do I, right? It's just kind of how it is. But there you go. I'm very happy about today. Very happy with what we brought home. Thank you guys for watching. Thank you for hanging out with us. Uh, comment below if any of you... All right, well, there you go, guys. Thanks for hanging out with us. Thanks for coming home, hanging out in the game room with us for just a little bit while we talk. Thomas and friends, you know? And Nerf guns. Comment below and let us know what your favorite thing we brought home today is. If this works, this will be my favorite thing. This will be my find of the day because... It's a good gun and it resells well. I just keep getting bad luck with them. Uh, Hannah, was your favorite thing? The Thomas stuff, the board game? What was it? Mm, I'm gonna go with the Thomas stuff. She says the Thomas stuff. Cause I found it. Cause you found it <laughs> and because you're gonna probably be the one to play with it. Yeah. Um, you guys rock, thanks for hanging out with us. Come back tomorrow because we do post daily videos on this channel. So I'd love to have you back tomorrow. Come on our adventure then. Trying to do get a lot more bins in this week. Fingers crossed. Uh, until tomorrow, guys. Peace out.